All right, folks, how you doing? So I've been asked several times by a few of the viewers if I could cover um, setting up my cuts in Fusion 360 and exporting them to then cut on Mach 3. This video is covering that using this uh, recent project that I worked on here, uh, Monopoly board. These are all straight cuts. They're not, uh, there's no angles involved here or nothing. It's just straight up and down, but it is a little uh, intricate, whatever it gets into the letters and numbers. This is gonna be a very slow cut with a very small bit because of the detail. So that's how we're gonna set this up. How I set this up with you on this video might not necessarily end up being the way that I do cut it in the end. I may have to make adjustments and come back and that's something that everybody has to do on their machines because not everything that you set up here and you program here is going to actually translate to actually working well on the machine. So you have to test it, come back, make some tweaks to it. Again, every machine is different. Every person's designs are different. Settings are different. So you're not gonna be able to carbon copy necessarily what I do here, and it's gonna work for you. But I'm gonna cover how to get something out the door, get it cut, and get started at least. Okay, so here we have our body. We have our object that we have designed, that we have done everything we want to it, and now it's time to cut. So the first thing we gotta do in Fusion 360 here is we gotta go to a setup. Now, folks, I'm not by any means any kind of a Fusion 360 expert. I use it almost every day. I cut with it exclusively. This is the only program that I use. But Fusion 360 is so complex and it has so many different features and programs to it that I don't know if anybody can truly be a 100% expert with this program. There are just way too many variables, way too many things that you can do and possibilities that you can do with this program, it's insane. So do not take everything I say as being the only way that it can be done because I'm sure there's other ways. I'm sure there's stuff that I don't know. There's stuff that you find out on this program every single day that makes your life easier and makes your results better. This is the way that I go about it for now until I learn more features and more abilities of this program. So we're going to start right off with the very first thing you have to do is you got to do a setup. So you got to go in here, you got to create a setup. So we got our setup here. You're going to go in here, you either do your a relative size box, it will take an estimate as you can see automatically of what you have here or let's say you have a large piece of ply or a large piece of lumber that you're using and you're cutting this out of whatever piece that is that you have you can put a fixed size box and you can put however big that stock is that you have to work with and how much you want this to cut out of it. So you can do that, or you can do relative size box, and this has got a, a one millimeter offset on each side. You can put that to zero, and that's gonna give you the exact size that you have right now, what this exact size of this body, of this object that you created, it's gonna stick to that size. So that means that you have to have your stock somewhat similar in size to this whenever you put it on your machine. It doesn't have to be exactly cut like this. It can be a little bit larger, but this is what you're gonna end up with in the end. 
my work coordinate system, I always do box point. So as you can see right here, you can see the coordinates are right here marked and they're dead center. I do my zeros on the corner, the bottom uh, left hand corner almost always. As you can see, there's every single, there's left, right, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right, and they all have an individual dot of where you want. So you can start it flat on the top of, of your wasteboard in the middle. It all just depends on how you have your stock set up. I almost always just go right here and I go to this corner and I always start, start here in my lower left hand corner. That's just the way I do it every time so that I'm consistent every single time. And unless it's a big wonky different job, it doesn't need to be anything different than what you normally work with. So there you go. This is your setup. All your tools that you do and all your, your cut paths, your tool paths from this point on will be based on this setup. You can do multiple setups and multiple cuts. But for right now, for the simplicity, we're just going to work with this one setup and this maybe one or two cuts. We'll see. And you just hit OK and then it's going to populate over here. OK, so now that we have our setup done, we're going to go in here and we're just going to do the simple outline cut here on the on the board for this video. We're just going to do this simple, this simple cut. We're going to do a 2D pocket. We're going to go in here. We're going to select our tool. I have a library. And I am looking for one and a half millimeter tool. And I go here. We're going to do pocket selection. I'm going to select the pocket that we want, which is this whole board. Retract height. I like to keep this five. This is a four millimeter drop. So we're in multiple depths. And we're going to do a maximum roughing step down of two. Stop to leave zero, zero, smoothing. And then with that, let's see, let's see what we get. So now that we have this, we're going to go to simulate. And if you go back into your view, shaded, no edges. And then you won't see all your lines. You'll be able to see this just as a, all this green, the way this is set up, this is going to be your stock, your flat, nothing stock. And then it's going to show you your cuts. It's going to show you exactly how it's going to cut it out, what moves it's going to make. All right, guys. So now that we have done the simulation, we know what it's going to end up uh, cutting like. We know where we're going. Now we need to post process this. So if you have multiple processes here instead of just the one cut and they all use the same size bit, you can just do control and you can select all those ones that use the same size bit and you can export those as one process. And once it gets done with one particular type of cut, it will move on to the next one and the next one after that, if as long as it's the same bit. Obviously, if you need to change bits, then you're going to do these in separate processes. But since we're only using this, doing this one cut for demonstration purposes, I am just going to show you what one cut is going to, going to give you and how to post-process that. So you're just going to go to, you're going to right-click on here, go to post-process. So this is going to pop up. Your post-processor, either do it from your cloud, it's going to come from your computer, it just depends on how you have your setup your Fusion 360 here, 
Fusion 360 already has a post processor for Mach 3 already in their system, so it makes things real easy. It will export the language that Mach 3 knows and understands. So it'll be processed in a format that you can use easily and seamlessly with Mach 3. This is where your folder is going to be exported to. Right now, I'm just putting it on my desktop. Normally, I put it onto a removable flash card because that's what I'm going to plug into, into my machine to run this operation. Now, if you work on the computer, on the same computer that you use to run your machine, you won't have to do that. Put it someplace where you can find it, you know where it's at. This is your program name and your file name. This is, we're just going to put M1 from Monopoly first cut. Click open NC file and editor. So after we click post, it's going to save the file and then it's going to open the editor and it's going to show you the G code. All these settings are going to be dependent on your machine. I don't mess with any of them except for this one, safe free tracks, clearance height. I don't like G28 code and I don't like G53 code. I want it to my clearance height. My clearance height is here that you set right here in your heights, your retract height. So whenever it's going to cut here and move on to another place, it's going to come up five millimeters, go over, and then down into the cut instead of just dragging across. So this is why I use the clearance height for this command of safe retracts. All right, whenever you're happy with all your settings, you just hit post. It's gonna bring up the location and where you're gonna dump the file. Let's hit save, yes, we're gonna overwrite it. And then this window's gonna pop up. So this is your actual G code. This is what Mach 3 is gonna take and read it, and it's gonna cut this right here that you just set up. These are all the coordinates for the machine to make its cut. Now I come in here right after the M6, the T4 and the M6 command, I hit enter, and I always add this code. G1, X0, Y0, Z5. So this right here, this S18000 M3, this is turning your spindle on. So your spindle is actually turning on right here, and then it's gonna travel to its first cut and it's going to go right here and it's going to start the feed rate and then it's going to start cutting. This I add in here so that it starts the command. G1 will lift the head straight up at the X0 position and Y0 position. So it'll just Z axis straight up 5 mil and then start the spindle and then travel to the first cut location and then set the feed rate and then begin to cut without having contact with your stock. And I'll show you right here with that uh, G1 code. I'll click the, uh, the start cycle. I'm gonna turn the fan on. And I'm gonna start and you'll watch the, uh, you'll watch the tool lift and then start. this and I always put this in the very end here so it's gonna when it's done with the last cut it's gonna go right back to this position and the Y zero and five millimeters up so it will end exactly where it started and then you just Z up change your bit re-zero your Z and this is already in this in the home position you don't have to find your home again for your X and your Y. You just put in your new bit and then find zero for your new bit and click start for your next process. This just makes it real easy for me. This is the way I do it. You're going to develop your own ways based on your machine and what your cuts are doing. But this is a little trick that I use that makes my life a lot easier. Click save and exit.
and you're ready to go. And that's pretty much it. I um, hope this helps. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and leave them down below. I'm as responsive as I possibly can be. A lot of people question and make comments, so I can't get everybody, but I try to get a majority of them as, po as much as I can. So hopefully kind of help some people that are still learning and struggling with uh, Fusion 360. It's a great program, but it can be complicated. It can get pretty uh, overwhelming because there's just so much to it. But once you learn how to use it, it makes life so much easier. All right, guys, I hope this helps again, and I will see you on the next video.